Audience Hi, so I'm Mike Skradakis with uh, Stars Against Bullying, and I'm here with the one and only Sally Forcier. Hi. Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about Night Riders. So Night Riders is an amazing short film, potentially a series, um, that was brought to me um, and it came from a friend who, who her son is one of the stars, Tyree Brown. Uh, and it's a beautiful, fun story that can touch base on the topics of anti-bullying and suicide awareness, um, but with a fun time travel element to it. So, you know, the kids, you know, get to have some fun and play like they're heroes. Um, but at the same time, we're you know, I, I find that the script is going to be able to touch people's lives right. and and start conversations about what bullying can do um, and the effects of, of bullying. And unfortunately, you know, suicide is one of those words that people and topics that people don't want to talk about. Right. It's, it's a very tough and touching and sensitive uh, topic to cover. And, you know, you, it sounds like you're doing an attempt to make a very good... Uh, uh, subject matter of it in your in your film so congratulations thank you yeah. and thank you're, you. you're filming a lot of that here in sacramento uh yeah all all of it's being filmed for the the pilot is what we're we're calling it it's, uh -huh. it's a short film but we plan to take it to film festivals um and start spreading the word that way but ultimately would love to get it to a series so people at home can see it unfold um and watch the characters evolve cool so i met you cast and we had the cast here earlier today. And I'm just wondering, uh, in picking the cast, was there anything in particular that you were looking for to... Actually, this is the best part. You know, I've known as a casting director um, primarily, but uh, what many don't know is I've been producing for 10, 11 years now. And, um, but the last year I've been doing uh, um, feature films, SAG feature films. Uh, I've done three in the last year. Um, hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so uh, with the cast, it actually came with the writer and director and the associate producer. Um, the, the two ladies started talking about their sons not having the right content um, for their age. It's a really niche market from 13 to 15. And for kids, there's not much for them to tune into. That's positive and fun content. And so that's where they decided to write their own. And uh, with the exception of the amazing Mason Partak, uh, they all pretty much, uh, by association with the writer director, they all came as a package. So. And you got an amazing cast. So uh, yes, I think when you, when you see this, you're going to notice a lot of familiar faces. Um, but these kids have been everywhere. Yes. Yes, great um, experience. These, yeah. these are seasoned L.A. pros who've been on the um, the likes of Days of Our Lives, um, uh, Parenthood, the NBC hit, Parenthood. Gumball. Amazing world of Gumball. I mean, Gumball. The, the voice of Gumball and um, Darwin, right. I believe. Um, you know, Chicago PD, NCIS. I mean, they, the list goes on. These, so these kids the are very talented. You had the winner from... Uh, the Chopped. Chopped kids. Yeah, Chopped Junior Chef. Chopped junior yeah. Chef. Yeah, uh, Mason Fartak is an yeah. amazing chef, and he's been on TV... I mean, since he was this big, yep. and he's uh, an amazing chef, but he's also a very talented actor, and has basically been shifting gears yep. to pour his heart into acting. So this is a really big um, step for him. He was in one of my other films I did last spring, and was amazing to work with. So we brought him back. Awesome. <laughs> Our day started out like any other day. Whoa. How little did we know? Today would be the last normal day of our lives. Uh, Night Riders is this super cool, um, fun, adventurous sci-fi um, film, short film that we're doing about um, two teen boys who find mysterious watches that causes them to kind of jump 
travel in time, um, and they're writing the wrongs of the future. Um, well, as a, a mom of a child actor um, and being in this business as long as I have, um, over 10 years, um, you know, the older my son has gotten, it just seems like the content, you know, has changed. Um, it's, you know, more of, uh, you know, the language is not always good or the situations that the characters are in are not always, you know, um, tasteful. And, um, and so my thing is, because this is a, a dream of his, I decided, um, to, you know, create content because there's not always a lot of, you know, opportunities or roles out there for, for, you know, for these older teens. Um, and so I created Night Riders with, uh, first and foremost, my son and his best friend, um, in mind. And I just wanted to, to, um, create the type of project that, you know, kids his age, could watch and relate to, um, and also that parents could be proud of and, you know, and want to support and, you know, and watch with their kids. So, um, this project really, really means a lot to me. It's really, you know, close to my heart. Um, I feel like first and foremost, a lot of bullies, um, tend to like the character in Knight Riders, um, you know, sometimes they're introverts or, um, they don't always feel like they can talk to people about things that are going on in their life. And so I feel like first and foremost, it's important for someone that's being bullied to know that they can always talk to someone, whether it's a family member, a friend, um, you know, someone in school, uh, um, and also to, um, you know, let someone that's in authority, whether it's a parent or someone at school, you know, know what's going on. I feel like that's very important. That's the biggest th takeaway is to always talk to someone about what's going on and how you feel. My experiences with bullying, I've seen it affect so many people who are so close to me. And it's really just, um, it's so heart like it's so like heartstrings they pull out my heartstrings because I see people who have full confidence with themselves just kind of crumble before your eyes and I think that it's very um hard to be like just a bystander and I think that you really have to be that person who says something about it and does something to help that person Uh, my experience with bullying, I re really haven't had any uh, personal to me, but I have had friends like in my friend group who have gone through bullying and stuff. And um, they talked to me about it, which I felt like that was great to do because I know that um, in other situations, a lot of people can just not talk about it though, and they'll just go through it and like by themselves and not um, explain anything or not have any communication with anyone. So I'm glad that they were able to talk to me and I was able to... Um, help them out, say, uh, maybe you should talk to a teacher about it, see what you can do to resolve the situation. And I know that always doesn't help, so I was always there to make sure they're doing all right, even after I know the situation was resolved. Um, I have had experiences with my friends being bullied. I've been picked on a little bit when I was younger, um, and it didn't really feel good, but I try to just push it aside and try to ignore all of the people that were talking and that's what I try to tell my friends and sometimes people can't mentally do that they can't ignore it and they just take it to heart and sometimes it just doesn't go right and so I try to talk with them and make sure they're doing okay like all day and tell them to talk to parents or teachers or counselors or anything they could do. I haven't had a ton of major experiences with bullying, uh, bullying, but being in the public eye has uh, brought up a lot of times where you don't really know who to trust, uh, who uh, are your real friends, and sometimes that's hard. You think that you know someone, and then they turn around and do something that you wouldn't expect them to do, and sometimes it's really hard because um, recently I've had a friend who I've known for a really long time uh, make a stupid choice, um, when it came, uh, to our friendship, and you know what, uh, I've known him pretty much since I was a toddler, and now we're not friends anymore because of one choice that he made, um, that really kind of set me over the edge. So, I play the bully in, in this short film, 
And, you know, uh, as, as an actor, it's, um, it's your job to be able to do it. And it's, and it's a little hard, you know, sometimes because, you know, you don't want to be mean to someone, but you know, when you're acting and you have a job like this, you come across situations where you need to be able to, uh, play your part. And then, uh, hopefully, um, <laughs> hopefully they know that it's, it's just a job, you know? <laughs> so if you're in a bullying situation, I know a lot of times it seems cliche, but it's it really helps to talk to someone, whether it be your friend, whether it be a teacher, your parent, um, or someone who is uh, just there for that, like a therapist or a school counselor. Uh, it always really helps to get your feelings out and kind of explain to someone uh, why you think this is happening. And you know what? Uh, if you if you feel like doing something. Uh, uh, like suicide suicide remember is it's a permanent solution to a most likely temporary problem so if something like that comes up make sure to get some help um my advice would pretty much be talking a lot with your friends and trying to talk to counselors and teachers like mason said um but the main thing is if you could try to ignore the bullies and just try to block it out as much as you can, I would say that's probably one of the most important things to do. But if, if it's hard to not like if you can't do that, then maybe just talking a lot with um, your friends and getting your feelings out, just like Mason said. Um, I think the main thing you want to do is um, talk to someone about it because um it does it definitely does get to you if you're getting bullied so it it you some people are able to just um like take themselves away from that situation and ignore it and just know that it's someone else's opinion on them and that it doesn't really matter but when it gets bigger and you really think about it like that is that is super hard to do um and so just the main thing to stay strong is to talk to people about it whether it is your friends, your your parents, a uh, counselor, whoever, a uh, principal, um, whoever you want to talk to to deal with that situation, that's like the best thing to do. Um, and also, you also want to make sure that you know uh, who you're surrounding yourself with. You want to, you always want to surround yourself with uplifting people who aren't going to talk down to you about the situation. Who are going to try to uplift you and find a solution to the problem. My advice would be to just, again, talk to someone, tell a friend, um, just tell someone you can really, really trust and know that in the end, like, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. If you're in school, know that school school comes to an end, you're going to graduate one day and you're going to go on and do so many amazing, amazing things. So, you grew up in Elk Grove. Yes. Yeah. Did, were you, did you, do you recall any instances of uh, bullying growing up or? Oh gosh, uh, unfortunately I do. Um, I'm sure it's nothing like what these kids go through now because of uh, social media um, and, and just all the platforms of exposure that we didn't have to deal with, right? Right. Um, but definitely I remember the sixth, seventh, eighth grade years were painful <laughs> and so, yeah, I really feel for those kids. Yeah. You know? So if you were, so if you were in that situation, what kind of advice would you give a child? Wow. Um, I think you just got to have your voice. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody needs, they need to be empowered and encouraged to have their voice to speak up because I think what happens is you feel so alone and that, that nobody would understand or get it. And so that's when they become recluse and, and unfortunately, maybe suicidal thoughts happen right. at that point. Um, and suicide's a very near and dear to my heart. I've experienced way too much in my life um, with that. And so when this project came to me, it was just like, it was kind of, kind of full circle, you know, right. to be able to help others. That's always been my passion, especially teens and preteens. Right. Um, that's a really tough age. And it's about discovery of yourself and when you don't know yourself it's hard to speak up isn't it it very it, it really is it really is and you know as adults you find yourself in those situations you can just walk away mm -hmm. you know regardless the consequences are you have the ability just to walk away. But, but kids can't they can't they have to return to school every day they have to see the same people 
And um, I think if they just knew um, and understood the force of an ally mm -hmm. and having alliances with the right people and feeling safe right. to speak up um, and know that you're not alone. I mean, that's that's really the key here is to, to, to trust and know that other people also experience that. And exactly. sometimes it's your neighbor right next to you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I, I love about this, this story is it not only is going to be entertaining for that age and that genre, but it's also saying, look, it happens to everybody and right. don't let it go that far. Right. And I can't say too much more because yeah. don't want to give it away. <laughs> but kids, if you're in um, that situation, uh, make it a point to tell your parents, tell a teacher, tell a principal, tell a policeman, tell somebody and know that you're not alone. That's right. Note that you people do have your back. It's not normal. As you grow up, a lot of that just, you know, uh, fades away. I think when you're in school, you go through this group. This, you have a, you're a group that goes through a bunch of classes together, and you, a lot of you probably go to the same high school together, and then you finally in the college. A lot of you disperse and have your own lives, and so you chapters over. <laughs> chapters over, and it's a it's a rough period in yeah. adolescence life. But I uh, think Mary Rose said it earlier in your interview. Um, I heard her say that. You know, it, it's it's scary to think that you are going to have to tell somebody. But once you do, you feel so much better about it. It's I think that she she captured that beautifully. Um, it's just just speak up. Yep. Have a voice. Yeah. Well, Sally, thank you so much. You're it's so welcome. always a pleasure talking to thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I love what you're doing. Thank so you. Keep up the good work. Fantastic. All right, guys. Stay tuned at uh, Stars Against Bullying for updated information on how you can find out where to see and how to see Night Riders. Like our page, share it. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Nobody likes a bully. No. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Look at him. That was so good. <laughs> Like all of you can touch them. All right. Nobody, Nobody likes, likes a bully. bully. Don't, Don't be, be a bully. Be a star. Wait for them. Wait. Be a blue burrito. Come on. All right. Don't be a bully. Be a star. Okay. 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 Nobody likes a bully. Don't be a bully. Be a star. Cut. Okay. <laughs>